today I'm going to share the abstract painting I did from my smart art box. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. If you are unfamiliar with what the Smart Art Box is, it is a monthly subscription box where each month they send you a box full of full-size supplies and instructions on what to do with those supplies so you can complete your project. They're not just shipping you a bunch of stuff and expecting you to figure out what to do with them. And so if it's a medium you've never worked in before, there have been quite a few of those for me, you are not going to feel totally lost. They walk you through step by step. On the back, you have all of your instructions on how to complete your project. Inside, it goes through a history of of whatever style you're focusing on that month gives you some project pointers goes over the supplies that you have so it's kind of like having a teacher with you while completing that project and just for transparency this video is being sponsored by smart art box so let's go ahead and take a look at what came in this month's box or october's box i am really light on this video so opening up the box, this always feels like opening a present. I never look up what's coming that month or see what everybody else got. I like to be surprised when I open the box. So here is the brochure that we already went over, has our instructions and such. Next, we have three pouches of Senlier. I'm probably saying that right, wrong, so don't quote me on that. Abstract paint pouches in purple, red, and white. Next we have paintbrushes. There's actually two in that box. One is stuck in my canvas. I'll show you that in a second. Those are by Raphael Carell. There's my canvas and paintbrush stuck inside of it. It kind of rolled off to the side wrong. And if you look at the canvas, it's actually fairly damaged because of the way that things shifted in shipping. Luckily, this is a really, really easy fix. First, I'm going to show you how to fix a damaged canvas. You can see on some of this one how some areas are a little bit stretched. What happened in shipping, things were pushing on it and it just stretched it out. So all I'm gonna, going to do is take a spray bottle and mist water. Whoops, that one came out too, too heavy. Change the settings there. I'm going to mist water on the back and I'm gonna let some of that water fall under the stretcher bars as well because that's where for me on this canvas, a lot of the stretching occurred. Now I'm going to take my hair dryer on high heat it's going to depend on your hair dryer. I mean, you don't want to fry the canvas, but this is on high heat. And this is a semi-weak hair dryer, which is perfect for art because I'm never actually frying anything. So I'm going to go ahead and just dry this and it's going to stretch that canvas back into place. And I'm going to keep drying it until it's completely done. Now I found if you leave one area a little bit wet from the, the spray bottle and you don't dry it all the way, that doesn't dry quite right. And you end up with a little kind of ridge where that happened or a little bump a stretch in the canvas i don't know i'm making up terms now but it doesn't quite dry flat like it should so make sure anywhere where you have sprayed the water just go ahead and use the hair dryer for all of that until it's 100 percent dry you can see i'm taking the hair dryer and going to where the air is blowing under the stretcher bar since i put a lot of water or sprayed a lot of water in there being that that's where the majority of the damage was on my canvas and i use, say damage but it's not really damaged because this is easily fixed just going to go ahead and keep drying that. And this is in real time, so you can see how quickly this, this happens. So that's mostly done, but if you look at the corners, see the, the little dents in the corners there of the canvas. I need to fix those now. So the easiest way to do that is just to mist water. I need to get water in those corners. And then I'm going to repeat the same thing. I'm just going to take my hair dryer once I get that water in there, and I'm going to dry it. And this will make my canvas like brand new, perfect, no damage whatsoever once it's completely dry. But again, don't leave any little white watery or wet areas on here without drying it with the hair dryer because it doesn't dry quite right. But this is a method I have used for years and this is going to be especially helpful if you order canvases online because sometimes in the packing or the box, the way that the box pushes on the canvas, it can cause a bit of damage there. But this is a very easy fix. They do sell products that you can use to repair canvases. I've never used them because water works just fine for me. And now my canvas is in perfect shape and ready to start painting. So for this, I'm starting with some little paper disposable cups and I'm going to squirt some paint in here. This paint is very highly pigmented, which is important when you're thinning it out a lot with water. Added a little bit of water in there. Actually, I ended up adding more water than I probably should have. I'll go with a little bit less water to start with. It, I ended up having to pour some of that water back out because I put so much in that the paint was just too thin and I had to squirt more paint in later on. That's probably, again, a little bit more water than I needed. 
And my last color, going to do the same thing here. And add a bit of water, and then I'm going to stir all of these up. Now, I didn't stir mine very well, which worked out in the end better than had I stirred it well. I ended up with chunks that separated from the areas that were thinned with water that just created this really, really cool effect. I attempted to mix the paint all the way. I just did a terrible job at it. I'm just using a palette knife to mix these because it's easy to clean. Once those are all mixed, I'm going to go ahead and stick a paper towel under this because I knew I was going to make a decent mess here. And I've got a piece of cardboard under the area I'm working so I don't ruin the table. Now I am going to go ahead and start pouring. I'm starting with the purple. See that's thinned out pretty well and as I get towards the bottom of the cup, I'll start having chunks of paint coming out. We'll mix some red into this. And this is just water. You've seen me do acrylic pours before with pouring medium, but you can do it with water. You get different results and you have to be careful because you can, if you try to dry it too fast, you can have areas that kind of split in the paint or it almost creates what looks like a crack. It's actually kind of a cool effect if that's what you're going for. Not what I wanted here. So you won't, I will not really use the hair dryer to dry this like I do typically with acrylic painting because some areas are thinned so much with water and some are not when you see those chunks falling off there, they will dry at a different rate and that's what can cause it to crack and cause some problems there. I'm gonna try to smudge some of that thick paint out a little bit. It's funny because when I saw it happen, my, my original thought was, well, heck, that was not what I wanted there. I did not want thick chunks of paint. I wanted it to be all even. But the end result, I loved so much. So if I do this again with acrylics and not with a pouring medium, I'm going to intentionally leave some chunks in there because it really came out looking nice, I thought. See how it just kind of runs? You let it do its own thing. Work slow. Don't just dump everything on all at once because you can make a really big mess really quickly. And you just let the paint do its own thing. Now, as it starts to run too much to one area, I'm going to prop things under. I think I have an eraser under one corner. I just found different things in my studio to try to keep it a little bit more even so it didn't run too much because I do have way more water in this than I need. Mine is about the consistency of milk. That is at least twice as thin as I would, would typically recommend. But I wasn't unhappy with the results, so it's hard for me to at the same time say that's the wrong way to go. It was really, really fun to play with and experiment with this. If nothing else, it's fun to watch the paint run off the side. So I take the brush out of the kit. The only thing I used the brush for was painting my edges. When I realized that this actually had a pretty cool look that I might want to hang this on my wall, I decided I better go ahead and paint those edges, not leave them as they were. I wasn't expecting to like this project that much because I'm not a huge abstract artist or fan of abstract art myself. I've seen some that I really like, but it's not really my thing. This was just fun and came out looking so nice. Plus red and purple. I love the colors that they sent in this box because those colors look so good together. If you've not done a painting with red and purple, you really should. Get those edges all nice and painted. And you can see areas where the canvas is really starting to show through where there was more water. If I don't like that, I can just pour more paint over it. Now, if you paint this way, don't just pour the paint out onto the canvas and walk away and come back a few hours later and expect it to look remotely how you wanted it to because it'll keep running. Even when you think you have the surface level, sometimes it'll just slightly keep running and you want to be able to cut, be, do this during a time that you can sit and keep coming back to it and checking on it so that you can adjust it as needed so that I can get the paint running back the other direction if it's running too far this way. I'm going to pour some more paint. This is way thicker this time. You can see it doesn't really move much. I haven't thinned it down that much with water. I'm going to smudge some of this with a palette knife. And all I'm doing at this point is experimenting. It's not something where I'm worried about everything being perfect. That's what I love so much about these boxes. I love experimenting with things without having that pressure of this piece needs to be one of my best. This is going to go on my website for sure. So I need to make sure that it's one of the best things I've done or I'm planning to sell this. When I do the smart art boxes, I go into it wanting to do something fun. It's just more, a lot more relaxing for me to know I'm just going to experiment and play with it. I don't really care that much what it comes out like. I just want to have fun. 
And when you do any type of acrylic pour, you're really going to be doing a lot of experimenting. You're just going to play with different patterns, different tools around your house, different types of, I mean, you could try a fork, running a fork through this to get different looks. So many things that you can do to get different effects when you pour the paint like this. You want to go with a paint, like I said before, that is very highly pigmented. Liquitex Basics, not ideal. While I love that paint, definitely not a great choice. The paint that came in this box worked beautifully. It's more of a soft body paint. It's not really thick like the Liquitex Heavy Body or something like that. It's much thinner, which works well for this technique, but it's also so pigmented that it's not getting thinned by the water. You're not losing that bold red or the bold purple by adding the water like you would with Liquitex Basics. And I only bring up basics because you guys are used to watching me paint with those. I love them, but they would not be ideal for this project. So I'm going to go ahead and tilt that intentionally to let it run to start getting some different patterns there. And look at those red dots that are towards the bottom, those spots. That's just thick chunks of paint that didn't mix up very well. That's why I was saying before, I was so glad when I realized that those chunks that I didn't mix them all the way because they ended up I think making this piece look so much better than it would have if I didn't have any of those chunks creating spots and just the globs of paint. I went ahead and got my hair dryer out just to move lightly. This is not on high heat. I just wanted to be able to move the paint and pretty much using the air to control how this flows just a little bit to create some more patterns here. Most hair dryers have a setting where you can turn off the heat. Like I said before, I don't really want high heat here because I can cause cracking, being that I have those thick, thick chunks of paint and then some paint that are thinned down so much with water. They're going to dry at different rates. And I didn't want the results. I've done it once where I caused kind of cracks and stuff. It, it was a cool effect, but it's not what I wanted here. So just a little bit of air there to blow that around. And there is my finished painting. Just remember when you do something like this, really watch the painting because over the next few hours as this dries, you'll walk in and realize something was leaned just slightly to one side or the other and the paint started to run where you didn't want it to. So really keep an eye on your work as it's drying and it takes a long time to dry when you use this much water in something. But that is my finished painting and the areas that are have thicker paint are going to be shinier than the areas that were thinned more with water. I'm going to put a coat of varnish over this entire thing and it makes it all have a nice even gloss and everything will be beautiful. Yes, I love this method so much. This was a really, really fun project to do. If you would like to sign up to get your own smart art box sent to you each month, I will have a link below in the video description along with a coupon code that will give you a discount off your subscription for life and all of the locations that this box is available to. Have you subscribed yet? If not, I have a handy button right there. It's round, has an orange arrow going to it. If you click on that, that'll help you to keep up to date with all of my new art videos every week.